Hi guys, so welcome to our super quick revision series. So let's continue from where we had left the last time. So we are still on to our standard costing as it was last time also. It's a big lecture. It's a big chapter. So that will take some lectures for us to be doing the recap. Okay, so till question number 33. Before that, what we all have done, we all have finished all the types of variances, everything. Okay, uh, all the questions of the strategy type up and so on, missing figures. Then from question number 33 onwards, we are going to be having information of stocks. So whenever you're going to be having information of stocks, first thing in this question, there was WIP stock. Whenever there is WIP stock, I'm interested in equivalent output. Equivalent output means quantity produced of finished goods plus WIP. And for that, you are always going to be preparing WIP account. In WIP account, you are only going to be recording four things. Which four things? You're going to be having your opening stock of WIP. You're going to be having units that are started. Then you are going to be having units which have become your finished goods. So therefore, buy finished goods over here. And lastly, in this particular case, just a sec. Uh, lastly, in this particular case, you are going to be having buy closing stock. So therefore, these are the four things that you are going to be having. Okay. Now, once you record these particular four things, by default, you will always be following FIFO method. Whatever has been started first will be completed first. Do the breakup of this. Okay, so this part, first of all, will be getting completed. The balancing figure must have been out of your unit started. Okay, so therefore, this other part will be out of this and this, your balancing figure will be closing stock. Now, why do we make this? First of all, we do this and then we start away with statement of equivalent production. In statement of equivalent production, we try to be having material, we try to be having labor and factory overheads. Although in standard costing, labor and factory overheads stage of completion will always be seen. Now, in everything, you are always going to be having two columns, percentage units, percentage units and percentage units. Okay. Once you all do that, then uh, you're going to be having three things over here. First, opening stock, process further and completed. That will be this particular data. Second, started and finished. That will be this particular part. Okay. That will also be coming over here. And lastly, started and not finished. That will be nothing but your closing stock. Once you all do that, uh, first figure second figure and third figure these three figures will represent output for the purpose of variances whenever you are going to be preparing material variances we are always interested in actual output this is the actual output sir why didn't you tell it before this lecture because there was no wip stock whenever there is wip stock material cost is also incurred for making your wip labor cost is also incurred for wip your overheads is also incurred for making your WIP. So therefore, these will be your outputs at such. So whenever we try to be making, suppose it's a question on material variances. Okay. Suppose it's a question on material variances and we are asked that find out the variances. So material variances are always dependent upon what factor output. This will be your output. Okay. Which will be coming at both the places. Okay. And then for this much output, what quantity of raw material should have been consumed at what rate amount up and so on in reality what happened okay so one rule whenever there is wip stock first thing to be done in any question is to be making your wip account once you will do that then start to make your statement of equivalent output these two things are must once you will do that then it is all okay now I guess that was the only thing in that question. So question number 33, whenever there is WIP stock, prepare statement of equivalent output. That output will be used as output for material, labor and factory overheads. Okay. Follow FIFO method. You require only four things to prepare your WIP account in terms of your quantity. That is opening stock, unit started, units finished and closing stock. Now, one thing I'm clarifying more. Uh, so this output of material will be used for materials. This will be used for variances of labor. This particular thing will be used for factory overheads. In factory overheads, your variable part will also be coming and fixed part will also be coming. So if ever this question was on fixed overheads, you are going to be having your budget okay, or your standard. You're going to be having in this case your actual. The last thing that you will write down is nothing but output. The last thing that you will write down is output. Your actual output is written over here and this is supposed to be your actual output. Okay, this is supposed to be your actual output. Now, once you will do that, I guess with that your jobs get over. Okay, so this is supposed to be your actual output for the purpose of variances. Okay, now this is question number 33 as such. Okay, and uh, I guess this was the only thing that we all have learned. 
Then in question number 34, stocks had started, but stocks now of raw material. In this question, there was WIP stock also. So therefore, we made our WIP account and then statement of equivalent output. Your actual output had come to 6,000 equivalent units. So therefore, we made a revised standard for 6,000 equivalent units. But more important in this particular question, there were two types of raw material. That is raw material by raw material Z. There were stocks also of that. Whenever there are stocks of raw material, there are two options for you all. Either you are going to be following partial plan or you are going to be following single plan. In such a case, what we all do? We try to be making a format in this particular manner for computing material variances. So therefore, you all have your partial plan. Under partial plan in this particular case, revised standard. So therefore, revised standard we made for 6000 equivalent units. Okay. Because in actual, the output was 6000 uh, equivalent units. Then for 6000 uh, units, what quantity of raw material should have been consumed at what rate to purchase? What should have been the cost? Once you all do that, your standard is all over. But in reality, always do remember, whenever there is raw material stock, you are always interested in raw material consumed. You are always interested in raw material consumed, consumed, consumed. So therefore, raw material consumed is opening stock plus purchase is less closing stock. Okay, so therefore opening stock in this particular case was there. Purchases in this particular case and then your closing stock. But then two things and that's what I tried to uh, highlight by uh, with these grey boxes. So, purchases is not a problem. Whatever quantity you have purchased at whatever rate you have purchased in this period, so amount you all will get. Okay. Now, opening stock and closing stocks have to get valued at cost. So, in this case, whenever you have to value stocks, follow some particular method. By default, even for raw material stocks, beta, you always follow FIFO method only. Okay. Now, FIFO method says whichever raw material have been purchased first will be getting consumed first. So, therefore, this thing this consumption will be first of all out of opening stock this number will come over here and this will be the balancing figure raw material stocks under partial plan are always valued at actual purchase cost this year's closing stock will be out of this year's purchases will get valued at this year's purchase cost last year's closing stock will be out of last year purchases will get valued at last year's purchase cost once you do that particular thing your this amount is all over okay you will be able to get your consumption cost of raw material Y, of raw material Z, you total it up. And then start to be computing your normal variances, just with one difference. Total material cost variance, how much we should have incurred, how much we have incurred. Material price variance under partial plan is always valued at the point of consumption. I've told you all the logics in the lectures. Okay, so therefore now these are just the recaps. Uh, so in this particular case, compute material price finance for quantity consumed, consumed. Now this is consumption, this is consumption, okay. But in case there is breakup of this, then you got to be computing it twice. That is at what rate you should have purchased, what rate you have purchased into in this particular case, your actual quantity. Example, if I can just try to have one number over here, that'll be far better. Opening stock was 2000, purchases was 14,000. Closing stock was 3000. Okay, so therefore opening stock, this is 2000. Purchases in this case 14,000. Closing stock in this case was 3000. So therefore this was 13,000. The breakup as per the FIFA method will be 2000 and 11,000. Okay, now <coughs> whenever you are going to be computing material price variance, okay, uh, at what rate you should have purchased? This rate is 5 in this particular question. So therefore we wrote 5 two times. Okay, at what rate did you purchase? So therefore, I guess this particular thing was 6 and this particular thing was 4.5. So therefore, sometimes we purchase at 6, sometimes we purchase at 4.5 into quantity consumed. Beta quantity consumed is over here, its breakup is over here. So therefore, 2000, 11,000. These, both these things we did for Y, okay. Both these things we did for Y, once for the opening stock and once for the balance consumption out of current year we are always interested in material price variance which is calculated under partial plan at the point of consumption so therefore we are interested in this 13000 this 13000 has two parts 2000 and 11000 and accordingly we computed same thing for raw material z then we total up all the things material usage variance how much should have been consumed how much was actually consumed so therefore we should have consumed this much and this much we consumed this much over here i guess there was uh, 16000 into 5 and 10 okay once we all did this then there was material mix or material composition variance. Material mix or material composition variance. 
I guess this total was 29,000. 29,000 should have been consumed in what ratio? We try to find out that. And then it was consumed in what particular ratio? We try to be doing that. Further, in this particular case, we had material yield or quantity variance. Overall, you should have con consumed how much? I guess this figure was 30,000. And overall, we consumed how much? Okay. Now, that was whatever we all had done under a partial plan. But then what happened under single plan? Under single plan, things started to be changing. Okay, how the things had started to be changing. First of all, purchases are still going to be remaining same only. I think that was at the rate of 4.5. But under single plan, raw material stocks are always valued at standard cost. So standard cost in this particular case was 5. Current year's closing stock will get valued at current year standard cost. Last year's closing stock will get valued at last year's standard cost. That was not given to us. So therefore, we all had assumed that. In this particular case, last year standard cost was also rupees 5. And then we calculated only differences that under single plan, material price variance is not calculated at the point of purchases. Sorry, not calculated at the point of consumption, but at the point of purchases. So therefore, when I calculated material price variance under single plan, for why we finished it off in one particular line. How? We should have purchased at what rate beta 5. We purchased at what particular rate 4.5. Into quantity purchase that was nothing but 14,000. Once we did once we did that particular thing, the job was all over. Okay. And accordingly, in this case, we tried to be doing for raw material Z also. Okay. Then we had done one difference also between partial and single plan. Material price finance at the point of consumption under single plan it is at the point of purchases that was the first thing second fee for leave for any other method of the valuation does matter under partial plan okay but it does not matter okay under single plan because in any case stocks are valued at standard cost then raw material stocks are valued at which purchase cost here it is valued at actual purchase cost here it is valued at standard purchase cost let me also just try to remind you all once i have done logics of all these things with complete detail okay spent one one hour on each of these particular questions to try to tell you all the logic these are super quick revision videos and hence we are only just trying to be recapping all the things further change of standard prices will affect under partial plan no but here yes okay now exactly this is whatever i had written even under your the summary also this in any case was supposed to be a concept builder question all concept builder questions by me are all one star questions there are material stocks we have to either think of partial plan or of single plan please check the introduction to material variances it is explained there okay further uh fifo leafo does not matter under partial plan okay sorry does matter under partial plan and not under the single plan revision of standard prices will affect the single plan and not uh, the partial plan. That's what I told you all in the difference. Okay. Now, next question was exactly on that particular part only whereby last year standard prices was different as compared to the current year. So, therefore, this extra line was given to you, which was not given to you in the, in the previous question. That is question number 34. And this line was last year standard prices for raw material by and Z was 4 and 12. Now, if this data is given, no, your partial plan will not be changing at all. Under partial plan, even if your raw material uh, standard prices change from one year to the next year, okay, nothing happens, okay. But under single plan, it does change. So therefore, what did we do? If it was single plan, 2000 and 4000 would have been valued at last year standard cost. So last year standard cost was 4 and 12. But then we say that if you're going to be following single plan, then in that case, your opening stocks have to get valued at current year standard cost. So therefore, we have to upgrade 2000 and 4000 from 4 and 12 to current year standard price. Current year standard price was 5 and 10. Okay. And for that, we calculate extra variance on opening stocks also. This variance is not there to judge the efficiency of any manager, but just a procedure that you will have to be following under single plan to be doing the things. Okay. That's it. Now. Once you all do this, your this entire job is all over. Okay, your this particular entire job is all over. Now, uh, this is question number 35. I'm just trying to give you all the summary of that. Okay. It is same as a previous question. Okay, except that standard price of last year are different. Only single plan will get affected as I told. And the only difference that you all have to compute material price variance on opening stock also as to bring it to the current year standard. So therefore, that's the only difference that was supposed to be there. Okay, then our next question. Our next question in this case was question number 36. Now, this particular question was different because of some reasons. First, 
in this question there was wip stock okay if there is wip stock first thing that you will do make statement of equivalent output okay and then in that particular case uh, once you make your statement of equivalent output you make uh, sorry first you make your wip account and then your statement of equivalent output okay this one thing whenever you are going to be making statement of equivalent output opening stock already had material how much percent beta 100 percent so therefore this year we are going to be adding how much percent so zero percent 50 percent converted means 50 percent conversion cost we have incurred your conversion cost means direct labor plus factory overheads okay now so 50 percent we have already incurred so therefore 50 percent will be getting incurred in this particular year so accordingly we try to make a statement of equivalent output once we all did that material part was very simple labor part was very simple okay but for factory overheads there were many things that i tried to be telling you all over here factory overheads was given combined but we could manage to do the breakup because this 4.5 no will consist of variable and fixed okay and this 4.5 it tallies up with this particular part okay so therefore we managed to get the breakup of this 3 and 1.5 so therefore this 1.5 must be nothing but uh, the absorption rate when 1.5 would have been calculated we must have thought what will be the fixed cost okay and how many units we thought we will be producing now fixed cost was always 11,250 okay always 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 okay so number of units was 7,500 so therefore this was supposed to be the balancing figure so in this case no uh, or you can directly do 33,750 divided by uh, 7,500 luck by chance worked out to 4.5 okay so therefore in that case when absorption rates must have been found out we must have thought that company is going to be producing 7500 units okay so under the standard no under the standard we did not have any single problem okay we could break off the overheads into two parts variable and fixed okay but as far as the other things go other things go in this particular case uh, that is <coughs> variances go then there was a problem and that problem was over here in actual data no they have given me this particular thing 36340 including fixed and variable and there was no way to be breaking it off so what did we do we did something like this under variable factory overheads okay which variances that you all have first you have your total variance and then in that particular case you are going to be having two parts of it which particular two parts uh you have you have you have expenditure variance and then you had efficiency variance okay these were supposed to be the two parts of that then under fixed overheads okay you have your total variance that is uh, under your over absorption you break it up into expenditure you break it up into volume volume again has two parts which particular two parts you have capacity utilization and then you have your efficiency okay we could not compute this variance and this particular variance because we did not have actual variable overheads we could not compute this and this because you did not have actual uh, variable overheads and actual fixed overheads breakup okay so we could not calculate this because we did not have the breakup of actual uh, factory overheads we could not compute this also for the same particular reason but then we could compute this we could compute this we could compute this we calculated also okay now comes the tricky part we could not calculate this because you did not have actual variable overheads. We could not calculate this because you did not have actual fixed overheads. So therefore, we combined and we tried to be having a total variance. Your total variance in this particular case will be total overhead cost variance. You merge the standard of both these. You merge the actual of both these. Whenever you will be merging the actual of both these, you will be able to get actual factory overheads. And actual factory overheads was given to you in the problem. Okay, that was 36,340. Uh, 36, Same thing we all had done for expenditure variance also. Once we all did that, these blue ones got combined, these orange ones got combined, and rest everything in any case we all had. Okay, so this was the only thing that to remember if ever, if ever in future, you do not have breakup of factory overheads into variable and fixed. Just merge them to arrive at total factory overhead balance. Okay. Now, that was whatever we all had done in question number 36. Okay. I'm just trying to be reading this out. As there is WIP stock, we have to make statement of equivalent output first. Okay. Material and labor are very simple. Just remember that for output, take the output from statement of equivalent output. Okay. So obviously material and labor are dependent upon output as I told I guess in today's first question you take the output from statement of equivalent output for overheads in this problem a breakup of actual variable overheads and actual fixed overheads is not given hence we combine variable overheads and fixed overheads variances to arrive at total variances okay we also combine variable overhead expenditure and fixed overheads expenditure variance to find out 
fixed overhead expenditure per annum. Sorry, to find uh, overhead expenditure per annum, that will be the combined figure. Okay, rest of the variances are going to be quite easy. Okay, now this was question number thirty-six. Okay, this was question number thirty-six. Then in that case, we started away with question number thirty-seven. Now, question number thirty-seven in this case was supposed to be a homework section. It is a very easy question, except two things to be to be remembered. There is WIP stock, so therefore make your statement of equivalent output, and then there is one line over here. The material price variance is recorded when the materials are purchased. So therefore we compute material price variance at the point of purchases. So therefore it was supposed to be a question on single plant dress. There was nothing in this particular question. Okay, now. uh this in any case was supposed to be done for homework okay so that was your question number 37 i am just trying to read this as there is wip stock we make statement of equivalent output first it is a single plan question as price variance is calculated at the point of purchases okay and then there was this weird question question number 38 okay now question number 38 as such i say had asked okay but then they have given all inconsistent data so therefore if you solve the question like this different answer comes if you start off from some other thing then some different answer comes okay so i that is one question that you will have to see from your notebooks only okay i have told ample number of time this is all a wrong question but then we can't be helping it so i have given you the answers twice okay first this 18 lakhs is not existent in the question this was your actual uh factory overheads okay so i say first of all solve the question assuming that this particular figure was not given so therefore you try to be computing all the things apart from that in this case they again solved it assuming that particular figure is given to you and then all different answers come so just try to check both the answers as such but just few small things as a recap production overhead expenditure variance production overhead expenditure variance obviously this must be combine of variable and fixed and that was given below also but as i told it was not required production overheads volume variance now volume variance only comes under fixed overhead so therefore this so this was fixed overheads volume variance okay and then there was production overhead efficiency variance now obviously this volume variance would have compensated for the breakup of volume variance fixed overheads volume has two parts that is capacity and efficiency so therefore if this variance is given other two need not be given so therefore this efficiency variance must only be variable overhead efficiency variance now these facts ic has given over here also in form of additional information but i don't think so that particular thing was required in any case okay rest there are two options to be solving the question although i have told you still the question is all wrong only okay it should not have been there in the book ic should have never ever asked it because if you solve it by one way a different answer comes you solve it by some other way then different answer comes okay so just try to check once the answer in your books please okay and then uh one sec what i have written for shorts over here it's a weird question thank you i see it has messed up with the data in the question solving by a different way leads to different answers please see how we have got the different answers so see that particular thing in your notebooks only okay further question number 39 in question number 39 no in this case what we all had done now first of all in this question there was wip stock okay so therefore if there was wip stock okay see the wip stocks are given over here so units processed or in process so therefore if there was wip stock you make your statement of equivalent output and there are two separate products not two separate processes it's not c enter so therefore for product a we make separate for product b we all make separate okay now apart from that the standard cost was also given but one problem that was there standard material cost per unit of product a is 2 rupees now this 2 rupees is a final figure that is how many units of raw material are required it was not given to you at what rate that raw material should be purchased it was not given to you 2 rupees was supposed to be the standard figure same way in this case how many hours should have been taken for product a that was not given at what rate the worker should have been paid that particular thing was not there so all those particular things were not there with us but then the final figure was there for fixed overheads we were given the absorption rate not the breakup as such okay and then we were asked that you try to be computing all the variances now once we are to be computing all the variances then in that case we don't have the details so therefore only way that i try to solve the question was very simple way and that was that you try to open up the brackets and try to come across the answer now in the required part first of all you had material price variance at the point of uh, consumption at the point of purchases uh material usage variance 
direct wage rate and efficiency, fixed storage, volume and expenditure, standard cost of WIP at the end of the month. Now, this particular part was very simple. Value your closing stocks for WIP at standard cost and standard cost were all given to us uh, over here. That part was very simple. Okay. But the parts that were not simple in this particular case were something like this. Material price variance at the point of purchases. So, whenever we are going to be computing this variance, our formula, I guess, is going to be like this. That is, at what rate we should have purchased standard rate, at what rate we have purchased, that is the actual rate, into actual quantity purchased, into actual quantity purchased, okay. This was supposed to be the formula under single plan of material price variance. But we did not have this, we did not have this, we did not have this. So, therefore, we opened the brackets. The moment we opened the brackets, we started to realize this into this was there in the question. This into this was also there in the question. So, therefore, I guess once you open the brackets, your two terms were 2 lakhs and 2 lakh 20,000. So, therefore, 20,000 adverse. Now, under partial plan, okay, under partial plan, the things change because there outside we don't try to be having actual quantity purchased, but we try to be having actual quantity consumed, okay. Now, actual quantity consumed. In fact, even under partial plan also, we did not have these particular three numbers. So, therefore, we open the brackets. Once we open the brackets, this into this we had in the question, okay, but we did not have this into this. So, therefore, what did we say? That this number is higher than this number by 10%. So, therefore, actual rate of material must be higher than standard rate of material by 10%. So, therefore, when we did this into this, answer came as 1,75,000 minus this into this in this particular case would have been 1,75,000 plus 10%. That 10% basically we all got from this particular data because this number was higher than this particular number by 10%. And accordingly, we all got your material price variance and a partial plan also. Okay. Now, usage variance was very simple except that do remember material variance are dependent upon output. Output means equivalent output. So, therefore, we make the normal format. Okay. We make our revised standard for actual output. We write down the formula for material usage variance, standard quantity to be consumed minus actual quantity consumed into the standard rate but obviously we did not have the individual numbers we opened the brackets and that's how we got the answer as such okay so material price uh, once we did the material variances labor was exactly same okay as your material only and fixed storage there was no problem at all except that for fixed storage actual output will be coming from statement of equivalent output okay and then you have this particular data standard cost of wip at the end of the month that in any case was supposed to be quite simple okay now with that we finished up question number 39 i guess for this lecture we'll stop it up for now Okay, I'll see you all next time. Let me just try to remind you all these lectures are only there as a backup reference for you. So, therefore, you can try to be revising your entire chapter in as much fast speed as possible. Okay, I teach the concepts in the first lecture and then I take you through whatever you all had done in each and every question. Okay, in any case, these uh, notes also do come on your telegram channel. So, ensure that you download from there and uh, rest. I'll see you all in the next lecture. Okay, take care guys. Bye.